<laughs> I thought I had it, I'm sorry, Tim, but I'm sure you know what I mean. <laughs> Thank you very much, Miss Rawley. Okay, agenda item number eight is an amendment to the public places, a particularly New Year liquor control, Taupo Turingi Tongariro Bylaw 2008. Um, you know. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this item is a result of um, <coughs> the last meeting at Turingi where there was some um, concern expressed um, regarding some antisocial behaviour around the CBD, and the question was raised whether. Um, that area in McLaren Park could be um, brought in under the New Year Liquor Bylaw, uh, hence the item to, uh, to this uh, meeting. There wasn't enough time in terms of advertising to be able to take it back to the next um, Turangi Tongariro uh, Community Board meeting. So um, the resolution is in relation to um, the CBD area of... Uh, Turangi, including McLaren Park, and from the 27th of December to the 4th of January, um, between 10 p.m. and 7 a.m. daily. Is that the only time of the year they have a problem? Um, there are there are ongoing issues, but if you wanted to do a um, a bylaw in terms of outside of those specific times, there's a um, it's a completely different process. Um, which requires um, special consultation. So this is uh, a temporary short-term measure. So not being picky, but so they can drink as much as they like till one minute to ten. Yep. And this is this is what the, this is what the community board wants. Well, this is what the board wants for the time being because there's nothing else in place. Well, Councillor Kepler, you are the chairman of the Turingi Tongariro Community Board. Would you like to move this resolution? I'd certainly move the resolution. Well, Deputy Mayor Councillor Downard's happy to second it. All those in favour? Carried. Uh, Moving now to uh, agenda item number nine, which is the uh, revised inception report for the Southern Settlement Structure Plan. Your Worship, um, Mr. Carroll uh, is uh, at home looking after his newborn. Um, he, now, one, he, he now has number six. Yes. Congratulations, Mr. Yes. Carroll, if you're watching. Six I'm sure that he's got. Now, I'm sure he's got the uh, number six on his knee and is wa watching with bated breath. Um, if I could uh, speak to this item for, on his behalf, um, basically this is a follow-up item from one that you had. I think it was two months ago, uh, where we. Uh, discussed with you some changes that we were proposing to make to um, the work on um, the Southern Structure Settlement Structure Plan. Um, this item picks up on that information and has simply revised the inception report that you uh, adopted two years ago um, and uh, basically is, is doing what you, you were looking at uh, two months ago um, of scaling the, the work on the structure plan down and just and, and spreading it over a little bit more time. Councillor Kepi, this is the most important um, document for your uh, um, end of our magnificent <coughs> district. Uh, I think we've workshopped this and quite comfortable, the board quite comfortable with the situation where we are? This reflects the changes in, um, well, I dare say, the global economic change which hit little Turangi in terms of... Uh, development that didn't go ahead down there, uh, which was to um, sort out our structure planning. That development didn't go ahead, so we've essentially split the plan in two, and uh, basically we've got the economic side of it, which is separated out, and we have the uh, Turangi Tongariro Promotions Association tasked with um, uh, meeting those issues, and they have a uh, working group in place, uh, which they call the uh, Urban Design Group, which will address the um, the town centre issues, and this change will still allow the development. Should anyone want to be brave enough and uh, go into subdivisions again, it will still have the red dots in it and still allow for that development in the future, whatever that future might be. Basically, if I'm understanding it correctly, it's simply parked and it's ready there when the pressure comes on or the need comes on or a private developer decides that 
he wants to be brave and uh, develop 50 sections or something that's ready to rumble at their expense rather than the ratepayers' expense because it's not necessary right at today. Right. Exactly. That's what um, this all prepared about. to move the resolution as such. Moved by um, Councillor Kepper, page 9 bar 1, the suggested resolution. And a second to somewhere, Councillor Johnson, all those in favour? Aye. Carried. Item number 10, Helen's point um, no, and I'm staying. Uh, and she's also, baby too. <laughs> well, kind of. She's gone off in sympathy with uh, <laughs> Mr. <sympathy>. Carroll. <laughs> um, so Mr. Carroll also be, would have been here as well, um, but I will I will stand in their stead. Um, this item is around our district plan pl changes, 28 to 33. Um, we're about to um, close off further submissions on those plan changes, so it's time to be looking to the next steps in that process. And uh, what this report is doing is asking for two things. One, or looking at two things. One is around how we um, we fund the, the, um, those plan changes through the next steps of the process. Um, some of you will recall that uh, two, uh, I think it was two uh, the, the previous council in um, budgeting for plan changes agreed that uh, when it came to uh, the hearing component of it, that, that would be funded at the time rather than put into the budget. So we're seeking um, up to 200000 to actually undertake that process. The second part is related to um, looking at the, the, the timeline for that. Um, there are two aspects to that. One is the amount of time that we require internally to actually uh, process uh, the submissions and prepare for the case and um, uh, obviously set up the, the hearing committee and the second part of the timing is around the appointment uh, or the availability of the commissioners who will be hearing this. Um, the, um, the, the work that we are required to do um, will take until we're estimating the, the second week of, of April. That would be the earliest in which hearings could actually commence. Um, the current ca commissioners that we're looking at are, um, at the moment they've indicated, or certainly the, the, the chairperson um, that we're looking at has indicated that they would be available from, um, from May. Um, we are obviously looking through our list of commissioners and making to try and make sure or identify um, those with the right skills. Um, but also with um, the availability as well. So we're hoping that we'll be able to do this by the 2nd of April, but just uh, it's, uh, I guess it's just um, pending the availability of those commissioners. Councillor Dunard, can I be one of the commissioners? At $750 to $1,000 an hour, how, how can they justify that? I'm sorry. We've already been part of the uh, process of developing the professional industrial structure plan. No, no, I'm just joking. I'm, what I'm saying is that I can't understand how someone can charge that much. I mean, you know, to sit and, and you know, the plan changes. I, I, sorry, I can't comprehend it. That's towards three, though. Sorry? Still. Well, it's a fair comment. I mean, we're in a, we're in a cost-cutting situation as a council where, you know, like John Key said, show me the money. Well... You know, I haven't actually. I wasn't that conscious of the figures there. Um, yeah, so, how much do these commit? Let's, let's, let's have it. How much do these commissioners get an hour? Mr. Chairman, that, that would be that would be normal rate. Um, well, what's normal they, rate? I'll ask they, the that way. They would range between the cheapest that you would get would be a couple hundred dollars a, an hour. An the, hour. The most expensive would be um, probably twelve or fifteen hundred dollars an hour. Are they, are they lawyers? Um, there will be um, some of the commissioners are lawyers and some are planners, some are engineers. Um, but these. These are the people that have undertaken, like some of our councillors have, undertaken the uh, Making Good Decisions programmes. They're consultants or lawyers in their own right. Um, and I guess the market de determines what they're worth, and the market has determined that they're worth that amount of money. And they're also potentially specialists in their field as well. So it must be pointed out, though, that under Local Government Act 2002, we have no option but to do this process. We are working under the um, Resource Management uh, act in this particular case, still, and it's, and it is it's it's still, still this greater than us. If, if you wish That's to right. rezone this land and, and do these changes, you need to go yes. through this process. Councillor 
Yeah, you want to be a... <laughs> <laughs> and Councillor Lutcher um, as well. So, just first time obviously through this, so the commissioners that are chosen, can they be challenged by the people that are submitting that, that environment court they go to if they don't like the no, decision? No, no. Um, the only only appeal that, that any submitters could have would be judicial review through to the High Court. Um, it's very unlikely. In fact, I can't think of a time when one's ever been taken in New Zealand. Right, so that's full stop after this, whatever decision they make? Yes. Oh, it's full stop. There's no right of appeal. No, they can appeal the decision, but not yeah. the decision to appoint the commissioners. And who do they appoint <coughs> appeal the decision to? The decision says, no, you can't do whatever. Who do they appeal Ultimate to? The decision of, in terms of the zoning goes to the Environment Court. That's what I just said. And that's but the, the question from yeah. the council was around yeah. the... The question, uh, the question, the question was along the same lines, Gareth, was the... Um, obviously, council, we're bound by what the decisions as well. Um, so that would be... That sets the way forward. Everyone knows that's the zoning. The commissioners um, under the Act, they won't be able to make a decision. What they're doing is, is they hear the, the submissions, hear the um, context, they then make a recommendation back to you for you to then decide whether or not you accept that or you send it back to them for further consideration. $750 to $1,000 an hour, won't be. <laughs> making a decision straight away. <laughs> well, maybe in life we chose the wrong uh, professions, you know, Mike, you know, butchers and things. Oh. Settle mine for four years. Councillor Craig, can I be reminded what what changes are we talking about here? <laughs> you really need to know. Oh, I don't need to know. There's the commercial industrial structure plan that we put out for submissions has got some submissions against it. Um, in particular, there's some about um, this area close to the CBD about using the houses more and more office space and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. That's the submissions read that sort of thing. The commissioners, we've done our we've done our bit. Yeah. We've made our decision uh, with all the information we had. Those people now have the right to go before the commissioners, and the commissioners say, "No, the council's wrong. We will allow whatever they make." It's now our hands are off. We're not in the kitchen anymore. And that's the biggie one, is it, Mr. Mayor? The, It'll the be biggie. held in here. The people will come in, but this yeah. is where you pay these okay. people that might. The plan changes. The plan changes actually cover a lot more than that. So they cover all of the town centre. So the the car parking rules, the height, the bulk and location of the town centre. They cover the elements that the mayor was talking about in terms of the the offices and the residential area and retail, um, retail and the industrial area in terms of limiting that. So we don't have a big box in the industrial. And in fact, um, probably most importantly, zoning the land that's currently in the rural area into future industrial with rules around that, which is why you as a council can't sit on it, because you own most of that land. Thank you for the reminder. Just as a bit more information though, Mr Green, so when uh, Mr Joe Blow comes in here and he does a submission before the um, the commissioners, you as uh, employees also have the chance to say why decisions were made and what your perspectives and points of views are. Do you? There's a statutory process which um, officers and or our consultants will be giving evidence to the commissioners um, to, to help them with their decision making. Yes. And councillors, if they wanted to, could sit and watch. Absolutely, it's a public. It's an open public um, process. Year 12 or 15 days. Okay, so that suggested resolution is that um, that the time change, uh, the timeline has changed, as noted, and that we approve up to two hundred thousand dollars as additional budget for district plan change experts, commissioners, and other hearing costs, including sausage rolls. Councillor Minster, uh, moved. moved. Thank you. Councillor Johnson, seconded. All those in favour. Aye. 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 Aye.